uh, dear students, today we are going to discuss about structure and function of I. So for today, this discussion class, teacher Maureen also join us. Thank you so much, teacher Maureen, for joining our class for today. Thank you, sir. So today, first of all, we will discuss about uh, structure of I and after that, like different part of I and after that, we will discuss about the function of I, like how the I is doing, I, I doing fun, function. Okay, so before going to discuss about the structure of I, we will discuss about sense organs. Those organs that sense stimuli. So I is also a sense organ that, that sense stimuli of light. Okay, so first of all, we should know about this general process detection of the environment by mammals, how this is doing. Uh, first of all, stimuli, stimulus is actually change in environment. Whenever change will come in environment, that will detect by sense organ. And after that, that, that will convert into impulse and the impulse is actually electrochemical signal. And that electrochemical signal will travel through neuron to brain. Okay, that will reach to brain. And as a result of that, you will feel the thing. And that feeling is called sensation. Okay. Now, uh, let us discuss about uh, different sense organs. These are sense organs, eye, ear, nose, tongue, and skin. For eye, the stimulus is light. Okay, so when the light fall on your eye, definitely it will stimulate certain cells, special photoreceptor, I can tell photoreceptor, the receptor that accept light. These are specialized cells here. And that light, after that, you will see the thing when you are, you, when you will see the thing that is sensation, so the sight is sensation for eye. Like that, for ear, the stimulus is sound and you will hear that. For nose, chemical and air. You know, chemical and air, you can smell that thing. So for that stimulus is chemicals, whatever the chemicals in air, and after that, you will do the sensation of smell. For no, for tongue, chemical and food, you you know different type. Like uh, you can feel, you can taste different food, different food having different taste because there are different taste but in your tongue, and by that you can sense that. For skin, you know skin is also sense organ. For sense, there are also different stimuli. For skin contain receptor for touch. Okay. Sense contain receptor for pain. You feel you feel pain because of that receptor. That special receptors are called nociceptor. For skin, we have in the skin we have also pressure receptor called baroreceptor. You can sense pressure. Uh, in the skin, there is also special receptor called uh, thermoreceptor you can feel the thing is hot and it's hot or it's cold. So you can do that by that thermoreceptor that are present in skin. So this is discussion of sense organ. Now we will move to our and we will discuss about, we will discuss about the structure of eye in detail. Okay. Now let us discuss about the structure of eye so first of all, we should know about, there are three different basic layer, layers of eye. So the first one is sclera, sclera, this one, this layer. It's supposed to be this one there, this first one, the blue color. And below that, you can see this layer, it is chorite. And after chorite to, this one, the innermost, like you can see toward the uh, uh, vitreous humerus, this one, 
down the chloride so the yellow color so this one we have uh, uh, retina this is the retina you can see this one. okay so three layer i have the first layer is clara first one is clara second one we have um, chloride right right and third one we have uh, retina these are the basic layers of eye so sclera function is protection of eye while chloride it is a vascularized layer it contains blood vessel and this this provide nourishment to the inner layer of retina okay now retina contains specialized photoreceptor cell like rod and cone cell this gear cell detect light okay now uh, you can see here this retina having uh, like on retina the uh, rod cell scatter over retina while in foia here is only cone cell and foia here is only cone cell especially if you take this this place of retina you can see here this is a little bit in for it so this place is called foia and this foia for example i make it like this okay so in this center of foia there is only cone no rod cell while little there is probability of rod cell can be little bit there in the margin of foia but in the center of foia there is only cone so for IGCSC syllabus, we will mention here that in FUIA there is only cone cell but no rod cell. Am I clear? Now we will discuss later on about the function of this rod in cone cell. Okay. Now let us discuss about other part of eye. You can see the sclera is coming toward here and this become like outgrowth. So this part is called what? Cornea. Okay, and this you can see the another layer that is chloride. Okay, it's coming over here a little bit. It's become here like a muscular, and then from here a lid form. This lid, this is called iris. This lid and this lid. This is called iris that control the amount of light. And you can see in the iris, you can see a window. This window. So this window is actually pupil, like this part, this black part of eye. This is pupil, while this part, the one that you can see brown color. So this is iris, okay? And the iris, you can see there is a window called pupil, okay? Now, iris contains specialized muscles that is called radial and circular muscle. Because of that, you can see sometimes the window will become small, sometimes it become wide according to the intensity of light. That is the rule of iris. In the iris, the important rule will play by muscular and radial muscle. We will discuss it now. Okay, now this part of eye, this is lens. Lens control, this part, you can see this white color. So this is lens. Okay, and lens is connected with the ciliary body. Lens is collected, connected with ciliary body, this. It's connected with ciliary body by suspensory ligament, the one that I made it, I make it blue for you. So this is suspensory ligament. Okay, while this one, the you can see the one, this, this yellow color this is ciliary body so say lens connected with ciliary body by suspensory ligament here the yeah suspensory ligament here they mentioned good knowledge okay so both are correct but for our saliva suspensory ligament is good okay now this cornea contain a specialized fluid that fluid is called aqueous humerus. Specialized fluid, that fluid is called aqueous humerus. Okay? Aqueous humerus. While this one, this eyeball, this contain vitreous humerus. Okay? This is vitreous humerus, while this is aqueous humerus. 
so usually you can see a question can come like how the light travel so first of all you can see this layer first of all cornea is coming after that vitreous humerus then pupil and then lens then vitreous humerus and after that the light will fall on retina this is the sequence of light that travel for you I, you, you, we should also know about over this cornea, there is another layer called conjunctiva that contains specialized goblet cells and that is producing some mucus like some fluid and that helps in protection of eye. It's also helps in protection of uh, eye. Okay. Now, uh, this is, uh, you can see here, this is sclera, the layer that is coming toward here. You can see here, this white color sclera, iris, pupa. Okay, so I think it is clear. Uh, one thing more. Remember, uh, this is optic nerve. Through this place, nevron move toward brain. In this optic nerve, there is no riding cones. This is called in, in this region. So this region is called blunt spot. And blunt spot, there is no riding cone cell. So no image will form here. Is it clear? So let's move. Uh, we can see it here, the structure of eye. So this arrow toward, it's supposed to be here, down, okay, above that there will be conjunctiva. So this is cornea, we discussed already. Uh, this is suspensory ligament, this is ciliary body. And uh, this suspensory ligament and ciliary body help that the lens should be thick or thin according to the intensity of light, okay? and uh, this is iris right it also regulates amount of light entering to your eye like it makes this pupil wide and small depend on the intensity of light all right okay so now we will discuss about uh, the specialized cells that are present in the retina okay so there we have, uh, I discuss about that rod cells and cone cells. So rod cells are those cells that are present over the retina that detect low intensity of light. That can detect low intensity of light, for example, like especially at work and down. For example, I enter to a dark room. At that time, my rod cell will be active. And I can only see the shape of the thing, but I cannot see the color because for the color, cone cell will work. So usually we are also facing such a question that a person enter to a room and he can see only the thing shape, but he can't see the uh, color of that. So what should be the re reason? So at that time, actually rod cells are working, cone cells are not active. So cone cells are sensitive to high, like, high intensity of light while rod cells actually to it stimulate on uh, through um, low intensity of light all right okay Okay, so this is detail of rod cell sensitive to low intensity of light found through the retina, but none in the center of the foia or in the blind spot. In the blind spot, there is no rod in cone, remember, okay? While it provides us night vision when we see, recognize the shape, but not the color. I discussed with you already. Cone cell sensitive only to high intensity of light and detect color. It's concentrated in foia. Cone cells are present in foia. There are three types of uh, cancer. There are three types of like, you know, cone cells that detect right, uh, red, green, and blue light. That are for red, green, and blue. All right, now this is the structure of rod cell and cone cell. You can see the rod cell is just like rod, while the cone is just like cone. You can see this one, the down one, it is like cone, and this one is just like rod. So because of that reason, it's called rod and cone cell. And you can see this is the this is the cytoplasm of rod cell, while inside the cytoplasm it is nuclear. So same like this, uh, you can see this is the cytoplasm. And this one, the small inside it, 
So this is the nucleus of the cones. Is it clear? All right. And now, Okay, already we discussed about the blind spot. If we are no right in corn cell present, we are optic nerve left the eye and move toward the uh, brain, right? And fovea, we also discussed about that. We are corn cells present, but no rods. All right. Yes, please. Okay, so please. Yes, teacher, <coughs> morning. Okay, now I like to discuss about how images form on the retina of our eye. You know, our eye, uh, there's a like typical structure which is involving in the formations of images on the retina. So this is about like, okay, I like to use this one. This is the cornea. So that very first outermost portion of the eye, and then this green part is the iris and then the lens. Okay, to form a clear image, our eye focuses the light, same as the magnifying glass we've already used in our science lab. Okay, so the light diverging from the object and entering into the uh, entering into the eye, passing through the cornea, first the cornea and the second into the eye lens and focuses at the retina. So in this case, our eye is totally bending because of the light properties of the cornea as well as the curvature of the islands. You know, curvature means the cuff, okay? How much, uh, because of curving things, the, our islands became thicker and causing more bending, the light rays and forming images on the retina. So this is because, you know, our eyeball is about the size of the tennis ball. And then, so the distance between that line, this is the center of the eye lens, and the center point is also called optical center. That optical center and the focus area on the retina, the distance between these uh, portion is called the focal lens. Okay, so the focal length in our eye is round about 2.5 centimeter. It's very short distance. And to take, to perform or to get a clear image, our light rays diverging from the object needs to be bending and needs to like reach on the retina clear to get clear image. So, that is why the cornea and the lens add as a convex lens before seeing this in our magnifying glass. Okay, so yeah. the, light, the light rays from the object entering into the cornea and 17% of refraction of our eye could be occurred at the con uh, cornea and the when you call the digital set aqueous humor. 70% of the light refraction of our eye could be occurred at that area, cornea and the aqueous humor. And then the last 30% is happened in the eye lens. Okay, so the Banning of the eye lens is depends on the curvature of the lens. This curvature is controlled by the ciliary muscle that you are already explained. And the curvature means the middle lens. point, the mid of the lens, right? Curvature. Yes, yes, curvature. Curvature is a light intensity of curving to be forming a like thicker lens. Okay, so this is called curvature. The greater the curvature, the greater the magnifying, uh, the, the greater the magnifying power and the shorter the distance of the focal lens. Have so, for example, it? let's suppose we have this lens, right? Mm -hmm. So, this one, one lens, we have this. In the yes. another lens, we have this one. 
it is thin. Yes. I mean, one yes. is thick, another is thin. So, uh, yeah. which one having more center of, definitely, you know, that one is white. So, it will bend, it will reflect more light, like the, light, the thing that is near to me, right? Yes, yes. So, which, yes. can you discuss it here, curvature now? Okay, so I will I will discuss about this. Okay, so you know the uh, the properties of our uh, the convex lens. When the lens is thicker, it has a greater curvature, and the light rays become more bendy. Okay, so I will yeah. uh, need to draw the proper. Okay, so this is our eye lens, and the in the middle part, this is the middle part in the center point it is called the optical center and then this ray is a principal focus line yes. okay so the light rays diverging from the uh, object so that uh, the light rays are entering into our eye need to be refracted more or bending more towards uh, to get the specific points or this is called the principal focus you know, so the curvature, it means the thicker the lens, the greater the penny would be awkward and the distance between the optical center and the focus point is shorter. Got it. All right. Okay, so like the thicker lens has a greater coverage, so the, I would like to explain about what coverage is. You know, this is a like the uh, rounded circle and this is the center point, okay? The distance between the second fence and the center point, this is called the coverage. Got it. Okay, so when the our lenses are thinner, thinner means just like that. So the center point doesn't change anymore, but the circumference is near towards the center point. At the time, the curvature is a little uh, smaller. So in the uh, like another message, the center point and the dis distance between center point and the circumference is called the radius. Right. Yes. Okay. So the the radius, the the thicker lens has a greater radius, and the thinner lens has a smaller radius. This is called curvature. Got it. Thank you. Okay. So here is a like a middle line of the lens, and then this is the optical center. So the optical center and the like second phase, this is the center of curvature. And then here also the curvature also, because that optical center, there is a like main principle focus and our light rays bending towards the center of like principle focus. So the radius of the curvature the curvature is had in the center point is a greater than the edges one. Okay. Uh, this one is the just point. This one. Which one? Uh, which one? What is that point? Can you tell again, please? Yeah. This one? Yeah, yeah. You talk about it. Okay. So this is the middle line, and then this is the light midpoint center point. This is called optical center of the eye lens. Okay, so the light rays passing through the optical center of the islands doesn't uh, bend it anymore. That rays is called principal axis. Okay, principal axis. So the light rays, which is diver uh, diverging from the object and reach to the islands and bending just like that, that bend rays are intersection at the principal axis. The intersection point on the principal axis is called the focus point. The, dis the distance between the optical center and the focus point is called focal length. You know, that focal length, the, the focus point must be on the retina, so it must be on the retina to get clear image. If that focus point couldn't be on the retina, we couldn't get any clear image. Our image would be blur. 
that. Had you got it? Yeah. So we will discuss this later on in the next slide, right? Okay. So, like, I would like to focus on the this slides, how images form the retina. So the image, the clear image formed by the retina is the main function is about cornea, aqueous humor, and the eye lens. These three things, uh, these three tissues and like uh, fluid could be shaped to get clear image by refracting the light from diverging from the object. Okay. Have you got okay, it? Okay, let's, uh, let's suppose, for example, if some problem came in your uh, uh, lens, so it means the focal point, if it came here, right? For example. Yes, it's, yes, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so okay, the, so. So you can see it here. Uh, for example, if I tell you, you can see here, uh, all right. Okay. Okay. So the in this or uh, in this figure, in this figure, this is an object, and the light rays are diverging from the object, and seventy percent of light rays would be uh, refracting at the cornea and aqueous humor, and then thirty percent is because of the ciliary muscle and suspensory ligament. I lens uh, make a refraction, and that light rays meet of intercession on that point. So this is called the principal focus point. So our images, all of our images could be formed at the principal focus point. Okay? Place so, light bulb. so that is principal principal focus point. And yes, principal focus point. If this point is yes. so the image will not form. Under yeah. Not yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. So the length between that optical center and the focus is the focal length. Okay. So the light rays intercession in front of the retina, we couldn't see the get, we couldn't get clear image, and beyond the retina also couldn't get any clear images. So it means so. It's like, like if the principal point, uh, focal point came like before the retina or uh, uh, behind the retina, you cannot see anything well. Yes. Because of certain issues within the lens. All right, so we can go yeah. to another slide. Okay. To so another slide is for you. All right. All right. We discuss this, right? Yes, you should, you should discuss this. All right. Because so it is. Now let's see about, we discuss about this slide already. Uh, we discuss this. Yes, right. already? Right. Yeah, you, you discussed this, right? No, you. I'm already discussed, and then you need to align. <laughs> okay, so. So, all right, so we discussed already that slide in detail. So now we are moving toward the iris reflex slide. You know? so when the light is falling on the eye, so the iris, uh, you know, the window in the iris, especially in the pupil, become small and white according to the intensity of light. So that is called iris reflex. So let us see about how it is working. So for example, uh, it's dark, right? In dark light, the pupil, you can see it is wider. You can see the pupil within the iris. So this window, the black window in this. So this is wider. Okay, this boy is iris, while this window is what? It is pupil. So the pupil is wider. Why? So that more light enter to my eye and I see I can see the thing well in the dark. Now, if when there is more light, you can see here, the pupil become what? The pupil becomes small. So that it controls the amount of light. So that more light may not damage our retina. Because of that, the iris play an important role, and because of the iris, the pupil become what? Constract. They become small. Now, what are the muscles that play an important role in this iris that make the pupil small and wide? So, let's see about that. That are circular muscle and radial muscle. Yeah, 
you can see here in this, yeah, you can see in this image, the first thing is this brown color completely is, is iris. While in iris, yeah, this one is circular muscle, the one which is in the form of circle, you can see this circular muscle. While this is the radial muscle. So in this image, you can see if this person is now in, this person is now in light. Why he's in light? Because his pupil is small. When the pupil will become small, when the circular muscle can contract, while the radial muscle relax, at that time the pupil will be small. So both muscle are antagonistic. Antagonistic means both are working opposite of each other. One is contracting, other is relaxing. So when a person is in bright light, the pupil will be small because the circular muscle contract while the radial muscle relax. Now, for example, a person now enters to a dark room, so at that time, the pupil should be white. If the pupil should be white, so in that time, the circular muscle should be relaxed while radial muscle should be contracted. So now you can see that in next slide. You can see here, this person is now in dim light. So circular muscle relax while uh, radial muscle contract. And the pupil is white, our pupil is dilated. You can see the thing clearly, like, I mean, the light is entering to your eyes more so that you can see the thing clearly. So this is about iris reflex. How does the eye focus near and distant object? The ability of eye to focus object at different distance onto the retina. The ability of eye to control the light, the amount of light. The ability of eye to control the amount of light is entered to your eye. That is called intimidation. And that the lens play important role. I we discussed already that, for example, a thing is uh, near to you, so at that time the lens is supposed to be thick. While if a thing is far away from you, uh, it's a distinct object, so at that time the lens would be thin. Okay, why? Because you know the object when it is near to you, so uh, you know when the object is near to you, more rays are coming to you, so it needs to be more bent. So for that, the lens should be thick. If the object is far away to you, from you, so it means the lens the rays coming that is less so it's uh, supposed to be like you know the rays no need to be bent more so for that reason it is thin now we will see it now how does the eye focus the light so first of all let's suppose it's a suggesting object it's far away object okay so far away object what are the changes it will come and then we you should we should focus here and the ciliary muscle the sensory ligament and lens what is happening with all these you can see here now. Let's suppose is this this object is far away. So what is happening here? The object is far away. Object is far away. So at that time you can see the lens was before it was thick, but now the object is far away, it becomes thin. It becomes thin. Okay. While the ligaments become tightened and the ciliary muscle, this is ciliary muscle, this become really ciliary muscle become relaxed okay the ciliary muscle become relaxed while the you can see this white which is called suspensory ligament it becomes tight and because of that force the lens become thin now let's see for the far away uh, for the near object it was it is for the distant now it is for the close object at the near at that time, we know the light is coming toward our eye more. So for that, the lens should be thick. So let's see. One second. Yeah. So the first thing is uh, here the ciliary muscle become contract. We will not use the word here tighten. We call the muscle. We will use the word contract. The ciliary muscle contract. It's come here like it come here. First it was relaxed. It go back to this position. But now it's coming toward here. It contract while the suspensory ligament become loose are slack and as a result of that the pressure over the lens is less and the lens become thick and now this lens having the ability to divert more light rays okay 
All right, so we discussed about this already. Focusing on a near yes. object, so we discussed about it. So we should move to our next one. Uh, this one we also discuss about it now. All right. Okay, so. Uh, yes, please. Okay, so uh, in this case, focusing the distance object or focusing on the nearby object. Okay, so the the main theme is the structures of the islands. Center a nearby object or islands must be thicker than a normal conditions because we need more or like we need focus focal point on the shorter focal point. Short, shorter focal length on the rectina. So that is why our lens becomes more convex. Okay, and then to the distance of, uh, to get the distance object. Oh, sorry, our lens must be thinner, and then at the time, ciliary muscles and suspensory ligament function is like alternating when we see the distance object or when we see the nearby object. So I would like to put some more information on it. So that ciliary muscles and suspensory ligaments are like fashioning properly, uh, like our age of maybe like your ten, teenage or maybe 20 to 25, it, is work, it works properly. But around 50 to 60, for above 40, the ciliary muscle function is a little bit slower than the normal case. At that time, we need a uh, like extra like um, functional lengths, spectacles or goggles to help to uh, our eye uh, images clear. This is the aging process. And then the other thing is like, this is because of the stretches of eyeball. Why our eyeball is too long or why our eyeball is too short. Uh, teacher Maureen, one thing I just want to edit here. For those students, IGCSE students, for that student, no need of this one, last two slides. Okay, and especially focal length in that for the biology, no need. But no need. We so will, I, I we will discuss it. No problem. Teacher Maureen, you can continue. I just I just uh, tell, I just announce to the student and someone watching the video so that they may not confuse with all this. It's just general information. So okay, okay, so that's uh, the like, okay, so, 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 okay, that's a uh, like, 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 we have to, I have to delete this one and uh, yeah. So, okay, we have no need of this slide, it's okay, fine, that's what I say. Yeah, yeah. This slide. Thank you so much, teacher Morgan, for helping. In Welcome, sir. Topic, because you know the focal length and all these things is more related. Welcome, sir. Your, and then, uh, of course, like biology, and you are also very good uh, visit speaker. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining the class today. Uh, have a nice day.